The Karoo region of South Africa is the production heartland of mohair, one of the finest natural fibers known to man. A versatile diamond fiber, possessing exceptional qualities sought after by the global fashion elite and used in the manufacture of luxury fabrics. The nucleus of the mohair industry is the farmer, or producer, who nurtures and cares for his flock of Angora goats, the source of this highly prized fiber. The goats are shorn and the greasy mohair, as it is called, is washed and combed by the processor, before being spun into yarns by the spinner. To ensure not only the sustainability of mohair production, but also to increase yields of the fleeces and raise an improved animal, a groundbreaking genetics project was conceived. The Angora Genetics Laboratory, or Angela. This research project in the Angora goat industry heralds a new era of cooperation between mohair producer, processor, and spinner. Angela owes its existence to the progressive thinking of Mr. Francis Pate, the chairman of Samuel Natural Fibers, who generously donated the capital to finance the project. His experience, gained through his involvement in the alpaca industry in Peru for more than 50 years, has taught Mr. Pate that involvement in all facets of a fiber industry, not only trade and manufacturing, but also in the scientific improvement of the animals, is critical to the industry's sustainability and ultimately its survival. An improvement in value and quantity of hair means an increase in income for the farmers. Under the farming management of Barry Sneeman of Flakehale Farm and the Samuel Natural Fibers team, Angela will establish a genetic evaluation system for a commercial flock of Angora goats, run under natural conditions in the Rietbron Willemore district of South Africa. The results will be made available to the entire mohair industry in the country. This genetic database will allow for the evaluation and thus selection for breeding of well-adapted Angora goats based on the following criteria. Increased fleece weight and staple length without negatively influencing the average micron and coefficient of variation of fiber diameter. Improved mohair quality, adaptability to the natural environment, and mothering abilities of the ewes. With suitable sires, the current database could be used for the estimation of breeding values which, together with blood and DNA samples, would lead to genomic selection. While improvement of body weight and fiber diameter may be evident over the shorter term, genetic improvement in breeding is a long-term project and the aim is to have concrete data in 20 years. The animal data will be collected and analyzed with the support of Grootfontein Agricultural Development Institute, or GADI, and the project will become part of the current biobank for South African Angora goats. Professor of Animal Breeding for Veterinary Science at the Complutense University of Madrid, Spain, Juan Pablo Gutierrez, has carried out genetic research on alpaca farming in Peru. He shared his views while on a recent visit to Flakehell Farm. We have a really nice experience in alpaca in Peru. We are selecting for nine different trays, grouped in two different sets. A set of fiber trays and another set of morphological trays. We, can, we have been able to reduce fineness from 22.5 microns to 18.5 microns from 2007 to 2014. Information is the basis for taking decisions, decisions in all activities. In this case, the, the decision to be taken is the choice of the best animals as parents of the next generation. This decision is based on the performances of the animals and the performances of their relatives. Also, registering the environmental factors affecting these performances is important. With such amount of information, we need the statistical and computer skills to produce to obtain the breeding values of the animals. Angela was started in February 2014 when 500 ewes were selected from a flock of 4,000. Selection was based on the estimated breeding values, or EBV. Rams were selected from the 2014 felt ram sales. A single sire natural mating system was used whereby one sire was put to 35 ewes in small camps, with supplement feed for six weeks. This allowed for parental identification and the collection of data on reproductive performance. 
Before mating, ewes were weighed. Ewes were scanned to check for pregnancy in June and groups in twin, single and dry ewes. All dry ewes were removed from the project and sold. Abortions were also noted. Shearing took place six monthly in February and August, with the August shearing taking place about a month prior to kidding time. During the shearing process, each individual fleece weight was recorded and a mid-rib fleece sample for fibre diameter analysis were taken and sent for micron assessment. Staple lengths were measured and a subjective assessment of style and character was recorded. After shearing, the goats were inoculated and provided with a mineral and vitamin supplement to assist with health, fertility and performance. During kidding, which normally stretches over September and October, the ewes were again placed in small kidding camps with a full feed supplement. This enables the farmer not only to check on mothers and kids daily, but also to assist with births if necessary, counting of kids, and ensuring that the newborn kids are healthy, strong, and feeding properly. Birth dates were recorded and each ewe and her offspring were marked so that they can be easily identified. The kids receive their unique number tag, which allows for parental identification when they are a day old. After the six weeks of kidding, ewes with kids are released to open natural felt, where they graze till January when the kids are weaned. At weaning, all kids were weighed and the data recorded. The weight of the kids give an identification of the mothering abilities of the ewe, as well as the adaptability of the young animals to the natural grazing conditions. After the February shearing, all the ewes were classed on age. Those not suitable for breeding in the specific conditions were sold at the Flakehale Samuel production sale, which took place for the first time on the 27th of February 2015. The new production year started in March with all processes recorded again. All this extra work and dedication to gathering the required data and analysis thereof will aid Angela in ensuring the sustainability of the Mohair Valley chain, not only in the short term, but for future generations.